In this video, what I want to do is explain to you how to remember and never forget how to convert your angles either in degrees to radians or radians to degrees. Now, before I kind of give you some tips and tricks, what I what I want to do is make sure you kind of have like an understanding of why our degrees and radians are going to be equal to each other, like when we have our angles, when we convert from one to the other, and exactly how do we do that? And how does that make sense with maybe some other measurements that we are maybe a little bit more familiar with? So the main thing though I want you to understand is the relationship here between degrees and radians because up to this point, most students are very familiar with degrees, right? We know all the way around a circle is going to be 360 degrees. So we'd say all the way around is 360 degrees, right? Also, we know that then halfway around circle is 180 degrees. Now, what we started to do then is we introduced the degree of the measure of radians, right? Which is basically taking your radius, wrapping around the circle. And what we found is the number of radii that it took to go all the way halfway around the circle, I'm sorry, was pi. Okay. And then all the way around circle ended up being two pi. So there's a couple equivalent ratios here that we have here, right? Or at least some measurements now we know that are equal to each other. We can say, um, let me write it like this. We can say now 180 degrees is equal to pi, right? And we know that pi is equal to 180 degrees, right? It doesn't matter which way I say it or which way I write it, right? You agree that these are exactly the same. And the same thing could be also said with two pi and 360. Two pi is equal to 360 degrees. Now, this is what we call our conversion ratio, but it's not written as a ratio right now, right? It's just written now as an equation. 100 degrees is equal to pi. So if I want to write this as what we call our conversion ratio, what I'll do is I'll say conversion ratio. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to pluck one unit over the other unit. So I can write this. Now, you could use 2 pi over 360, but I hope you'd agree like the 2 divides into 360, that's going to eliminate, that's going to give us to 180. So it's just going to be a little bit easier for us to be able to use the pi over one, um, the pi over 180. So I can write this as pi over 180 degrees. Now that's equal to one. And that's also, one is also equal to 180 degrees all over pi, right? So this is going to be our conversion ratio. These are what you're going to remember. And the problem that students have when they're trying to convert from degrees to radians or radians to degrees is which one do I choose? Right? So the best tip that I always like to tell students is always to choose the conversion ratio that has the, that has the unit you're trying to eliminate in the denominator. Now, some students also might ask, well, why am I doing this? Like why, how is this getting, converting from one to the other? And the base, the most basic example that I can relate to the students is also another conversion ratio that at least me based in the United States can relate to is with feet and inches, right? Because the thing is always weird. There's like 12 inches. Why is it 12 inches in one foot? But there are 12 inches is equal to one foot. Now our conversion ratios for measurement here for inches and feet is 12 inches is to one foot, which is equal to one, right? Those are the same measurements. If you take like a ruler, there's 12 inches in one foot, right? And one foot is equal to 12 inches. So that is equal to like that one, right? And in the same regard, you could also say that one foot is over to 12 inches. Now, how is this used? Or a lot of times, like, I think students are so familiar with using these conversion ratios that they don't even think about it as a conversion ratio. Or maybe it was taught like way back in the day and, you know, they just don't really remember it, um, remember actually applying it to convert one unit to the other. Because, yeah, it is pretty simplistic and it is something that's kind of intuitive with our understanding. So let's kind of like look at a couple examples and let me see, let me explain what I'm talking about. So what if I had a um, what if I had a measurement and I said, all right, something is 132 inches. And I'm like, hey, I need to know how many feet this is. What do you do? Well, most students say, just divide 132 into 12. And you say, yes, that's exactly what you do. But why, you know, why, like, how could we mathematically also do that with a gimmick? How do we go from inches to feet, right? Well, again, you say like there's 12 inches is in one foot. So the number of inches, the number of 12 inches that evenly divide in 132 is going to tell you the number of feet. And yes, that's exactly correct. But again, the important thing I want you to do is you actually are multiplying by a conversion ratio. Your multiplying conversion, multiply your conversion ratio is one foot over your 12 inches, right? So now what's happening is again, I'm trying to get rid of my inches, right? Because I want the answer in feet. So my inches are going to divide out. 12 goes into 132. Let's just go and double check that. So 132. 132 divided by 12 is going to be 11, right? So now I have, let's just go and read this, 132 divided by 12 feet, right? That's the only measurement I have left. And that ends up giving me 11 feet. So now I've converted from inches over to 
feet. And again, the same thing works as, what about if I have five feet? And I say, hey, how many inches is that? What do you do? Multiply by 12. Why do you multiply by 12? Right? Because every five, every foot has 12 inches. So if you have five of them, multiply all five of them times 12, and that's going to give you two. Yes. But again, if you think about this, that is correct. That's intuitively correct. But again, like my point that I'm trying to make to you is like, we still got went from feet to inches, right? So we got to think about this in terms of conversion ratio, that 12 inches over one foot, right? My feet is getting delimited. That's leaving with a five times 12 inches, which five times 12 is going to give you a 60 inches, okay? So I had to go through this basic understanding so you can understand why we're using these conversion ratio when I want to convert something as simplistic as radians to degrees like four pi over three. Now, you might have no idea what four pi over three is, um, and you might be like, oh crap, conversion ratio, pi over 180, 180 over pi, pi over 180, one over pi. And they think, ah, what am I trying to get rid of? Because it's not as simple, in my opinion, as getting rid of feet and, and feet and inches, right? But I do know that I need to get rid of the pi, right? I need to convert, this is a radian, right? And I need to make this a degree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by 180 degrees all over pi. Now, what is that gonna do? The pi's are gonna divide out just like the inches or the feet divided out here and the inches divided up here. Then I can say three divides into 180. Well, let's go with this. Way. Three divides into 18 six times. So three is going to divide into 180 60 times. So that's going to give me a 60 degrees. Then I do four times six, which is 24. Four times 60 is going to be a 240. And again, what's my only degree? What's my only unit left? Degrees, which is 240. Then we look at this and say, all right, well, then what about if you have 140 degrees and I want to convert this into radians? I want to put a pi in there. How am I going to put a pi in there? Well, you say I need to get rid of the degrees, right? So pi over 180, 1 over pi, pi over 180, 1 over pi. You have to multiply by your pi over 180. Why this way and not that way? Because again, I need these degrees, guys, to divide out. Now, crossing out the zeros is kind of like dividing a 10 on the top and the bottom, right? So... If you divide top and the bottom, then what you're going to be left with here is a 14 pi over an 18. Now, what else can I evenly divide? Because at this point, I don't need to write a decimal. I don't need to like further simplify this. I just need to reduce the fraction. And you can say like, uh, I can also reduce, I can also divide the top by two, which is give me a seven and the top by two, which would give me a nine. So therefore the final answer here is going to be a two pi, not a two pi, seven pi over nine, right? So therefore it's a seven pi all right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you understanding how to convert between radians and degrees, and you're never going to forget it. And if so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.